This video is sponsored by Linode. Anyone can build on Linode, whether you need a development portfolio to land your next job or you're ready to put your app into production, Linode can get you there. For $20 in free hosting credit, click the link below or sign up at linode.com slash traversy. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my Flutter crash course. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get Flutter up and running and talk about it a little bit, what it is. We're going to look at just a couple slides and then jump into our project, which is going to be a simple word pair generator app similar to the one that you'll find in the docs. So if you want to use the Flutter documentation kind of as a supplement to this project, then you can do that. And this is meant to be a beginner course. It's meant to be an introduction to Flutter, um, even your first, your very first Flutter. Flutter video and project. So let's talk about what Flutter is. It's an SDK or a software development environment and a UI toolkit from Google to build natively compiled apps for mobile, web and desktop, although it's mostly used for mobile and that's what we're focusing on. And what's fantastic about Flutter is that you can build very performant iOS and Android apps, native apps, using only one code base rather than the traditional route where you'd have either a Java or a Kotlin code base for your Android app, and then you'd have a Swift code base for your um, iOS app. With Flutter, not only do we have a single code base, but it's easier to create applications, at least in my opinion. And Flutter is cross-platform. You can use it on Mac, Windows, Linux, although if you're building for iOS, then you want to use a Mac. And Flutter is extremely fast. It gives you that native feel. There's, there's other options for mobile development using kind of the web technologies. You know, you have React Native, you have Native Script, Ionic, some of the other ones. But Flutter is, is generally faster because it doesn't have that extra JavaScript bridge to the OEM user interface. Flutter actually uses the native ARM architecture binary, which makes fa Flutter faster than all of its competitors. So Flutter uses a programming language called Dart, which is an object oriented language that uses classes and it's optimized for building UIs and it's very fast on all platforms. Now I realize that many of you probably don't know Dart. However, if you know any language, especially JavaScript, I don't think you'll have a hard time picking it up because it actually resembles JavaScript in a lot of ways and it even has some elements of Java. So many people learn Flutter and Dart simultaneously. I do have plans on creating a Dart crash course within the next month or so. So if you're watching this in the future, I will put the, the link to that core, that crash course in the description. There's also plenty of other videos and, and the documentation for Dart is really good as well uh, if you need help. Also, we'll be using the Flutter Visual Studio Code extension, which basically, I mean, any method or anything in Dart, you can just hover over and it'll tell you exactly what it does. Okay, so don't worry about it if you've never even touched Dart before. So everything in Flutter is essentially a widget and Flutter widgets are made to look exactly like the stock OEM widgets pixel for pixel and material design comes out of the box with Flutter. Some of the, the common widgets are scaffold, which is uh, like a high level widget that can have lower level ones inside of it, like a container, an image, an icon, even text an app bar, things like that. And there's a whole catalog of widgets in the documentation. There's widgets for like animation and motion, input, accessibility, pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, also, widgets can be stateless or stateful, which I'm going to talk about in the next two slides. And there's a lot of similarities here with something like React or, or pretty much any front end JavaScript framework. Instead of using components, we use widgets and each widget has a build method that can be overridden. Just like in React, you have render, which uh, is a, you know, a method within a component that will render it into the UI. So there's a lot of similarities here. So it's it's not the most difficult thing in the world to go from something like React to Flutter. All right, so let's take a look at stateless and stateful widgets. So stateless widgets are just that they're immutable. Um, basically, the, their state can't change during the runtime of the app. And here's a, an example here where we have a class called start screen and extends stateless widget. And then we're just overriding the build method here and we're just returning basically an empty container widget. So for stateful components, or I'm sorry, stateful widgets, we have mutable state that can be redrawn on the screen multiple times. Now, in this example, we have this this start screen class, which extends stateful widget. And what we're doing here is instead of overriding a build method, we're overriding create state 
and we're returning an instance of this start screen screen state which we have defined down here and down here we're overriding our build and we're outputting our UI which in this case is just a, an empty container. So in most cases when you have a stateful widget you're going to have two classes like this one to override the create state and then one to build your UI. Okay, and if that's confusing, don't worry about it. We're going to get more into that later. Okay, so as far as setting up your system, there's some requirements. If you're building iOS apps on a Mac, you need the latest Xcode and that will give you the iOS simulator. That's what we'll be using to basically view our application. On Windows, you need Android Studio, and if you're on Mac and you're building for Android, you need Android Studio, the SDK, the emulator, which is the AVD, the Android virtual device. So you need to get that stuff installed. I already have it on my machine, but I will show you where to, to get it and how to install it. You also need the Flutter plugin for Android Studio. And then if you're using VS Code, you want the Flutter extension, which is fantastic. It, it has a ton of... Um, Uh, IntelliSense features. So if you if you're confused about what a certain widget is, you can just hover over it. It'll tell you exactly what it is. And also we can use the debugger to run our application right in the iOS simulator. So it's a really nice workflow. All right. So enough with these slides. Let's jump in and let's start to build our application. All right, so real quick, I just want to go over the application we'll be building, although this crash course isn't really about the application itself. It's about learning the fundamentals of Flutter to be able to build UIs and widgets and stuff like that. So basically, we have a word pair generator, and it's similar to the application in the docs. So if you want to use that as a supplement, you can. And we just have a list view of different word pairs, maybe for a server name or a username or something like that. And we can keep scrolling and it's just going to keep generating. new word pairs and then on the side you can see we have these heart icons that we can actually click or we can click uh, anywhere in the the what are called list tiles and that will select them as basically our favorites or our saved word pairs that we like and then we have this little list icon up here in the app bar that we can click and it will take us to a new page or a new route that shows us all of our saved word pairs or our favorite word pairs all right so we're going to be dealing with routing we're going to be dealing with a bunch of built-in widgets we're going to deal with custom stateless and stateful widgets so we'll learn quite a bit in this crash course even though this is a pretty Uh, pretty useless application in general, but uh, I think you'll learn a lot of fundamentals so that you can move on to create your own stuff. All right, so that's it. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so as I mentioned before, I have my machine set up for Flutter development, but I'm going to go through and show you all the steps you need to take to get set up. Now, if you go to the flutter.dev website and you go to docs and then get started, you can pick on pick your system here for instance Windows and it gives you some instructions download the SDK and so on but I've actually created a gist to really just lay things out in a, in a simple manner um, so first thing you want to do is download the SDK so from here again choose whatever system you're on I'm on a Mac so I would choose Mac and download the zip file and what that's going to give you is a is the SDK it's going to be a folder called flutter and you need to put that somewhere on your system all right so for instance for me I have mine in my home directory so this is my home users slash Brad Traversy and then in a folder called utils that's where I put that flutter folder now once you put the SDK somewhere on your machine you want to create a path okay and on Windows I don't think it shows you how to do it, but it's just like if you were to add a path for anything else. Yeah, you need to add your environment variables, which I can't show you because I'm not on Windows. However, if you're on Mac, what you would do is go to your bash profile, which should be in your home directory, although it's hidden on uh, and on Mac. If you want to see, <coughs> excuse me, hidden files and folders, you can do command shift period and it'll show all of your hidden files. Okay, and I'm just going to organize this and right here is my bash profile. Now, if you don't see this, if you don't have this on your machine, you can create it by going to your home directory, which I'm currently in. And then you can just use the touch command to create the file. And you can say uh, not brash bash underscore. I'm sorry, dot bash underscore profile. And you can create it Okay, if you don't have it. Uh, and then you just want to edit that 
So I'm going to just go ahead and open it with text edit and you want to add your path to your Flutter SDK. So make this a little bigger and this is the line that you want to look at. This is what you want to add. So you want to add export path equals money sign path colon and then the location of your uh, the bin folder inside the Flutter folder, which for me is in my users, Brad Traversy, utils, Flutter bin. Okay, obviously your path will be different. So once you add that and you save this file, you can restart your terminal and then you should be able to run the flutter doctor command. And what that's going to do is give you a summary of kind of uh, your dependencies and in, in what you have installed and, and what you need. You can see I have all green checks here, but you may have some red X's. So we have flutter. We have the Android plugin um, Xcode. which I have installed. Uh, you want the latest version of Xcode if you're on a Mac, Android Studio and the VS Code extension. So I have all this stuff installed. However, you may have some red X's and you need to take care of that. All right, so we're going to move on to what else is required. So we're at this point right here. Now, if you're on Mac, you want to have the latest version of Xcode. I'd suggest getting it from the App Store. So if you just open up the App Store and search for Xcode, You want this right here. okay? you want to grab that and then you want to run these two commands right here. This is also in the docs. Uh, where is it? Right here. okay? so just run both of these commands and that's to configure the Xcode command line tools to the newly installed version of Xcode. So run those. And this is and this is only on Mac, obviously. And then once you do that, you should be able to run your iOS simulator. So let's try that out. We'll go ahead and run open a simulator. And there we go. So we get an iPhone 11 Pro Max right on our desktop. And this is actually what we'll be using to look at and test our application. Okay, but I'm going to close that for now. So at this point, if you're on a Mac, you should have Xcode installed and you should be able to run the simulator. Now you want to install Android Studio. So this is for the Android apps and on Windows. This is required. Um, so make sure that, you know, if you're on Windows, you install this. You can get it from here. Just go ahead and download it, install it. And then you want to install the Flutter plugin in Android Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to do that real quick. I'm just going to open up Android Studio. And from here, you want to go to configure and then plugins. Okay, and then just search for Flutter. And right here you can see there's the Flutter plugin and I already have it installed. So you just want to click install. All right. And once you do that, you want to create a virtual device. So you go to configure AVD manager, which is the Android virtual device manager. And you can see I already have a Pixel 2 set up here. Um, so what you want to do. If you don't have any set up already is just create new virtual device. You can choose from a bunch of different devices. I'll, I just go with the default Pixel 2 and then just go through, click next and create a new device. And then once you do that, you can click, click play and it should launch the emulator. All right. So now you have an Android device. And if you're on Windows, this is what you'll be using to um, to view and, and test your Flutter application. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and just quit out of that. Okay, so we have that set up and that's pretty much it. Now you just need to install the VS Code extension, but I'm going to do that after we actually create our Flutter app. So to create an app, we can just run Flutter create and then whatever we want to call our application. So I'm going to go into my dev folder where I want to create my application and run Flutter create and let's call this word pair underscore generator. And that will generate our application. Okay, so now I'm just going to CD into word pair generator and I'm going to open it up with VS Code. And obviously you don't have to use VS Code. You could use uh, like Android Studio or some other text editor IDE. But if you install the Flutter extension, so let's see uh, Flutter. I already have it installed. Looks like there's a reload required. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, Dart has been updated. Okay, so I just want to show you real quick the extension where to go. Um, so it installs the Dart extension 
or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you need to install that. I mean, just make sure you have both the Flutter and the Dart extension. Yeah, but this so this is the Flutter extension. And it'll allow us to have a really nice workflow um, to to with hot reload and all that stuff. And then the Dart. Let's see right here, Dart language support. So this will give you like um, uh, code highlighting snippets, stuff like that. So just make sure you have those two installed. All right. So now we're ready to get started. So you can see we have all the files over here that were generated. And in order to run this, what we can do is go down here. You see this no device. So if I click that, I now have the option to use either my Pixel 2 Android device or my iOS simulator. I'm going to use my iOS simulator and it's going to open up. It's not going to run the app just yet, but it will open the simulator and I'm just going to make this a little smaller so we can see both at the same time I can minimize this. And to run this, all we have to do is go up to the menu, which is you guys can't see it's off the screen. But if you go to um, debug and then start debugging and choose your environment, which is going to be Dart and Flutter, it should launch your application. So we have a really nice workflow. I'm just going to close this up. We don't need that anymore. And this will make it so that one when, when we save our files, it'll auto reload and it's just a really nice workflow. Okay, so what this will do is load the basically just the boilerplate app. So we have just an app bar up here. We have this. You have pushed the button this many times with a zero and then we have a floating button down here. And if I click it, it'll just increment the number by one. So this is just the, the, the little default application that they give you. But our app is running. So if we look over here, you can see our files. Now, as far as the file structure, the only thing that the only place that we really need to worry about right now is the lib folder. This is where all of our code is going to go. You can see there's a main dot dart file. And this is what is running the app. This is the, the main source code. Now, this may look a little intimidating, but it's it's like 85% comments, so don't get too intimidated by it. But basically, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the code, but we're importing material design and every Dart application is going to have this main function. Okay, so void main void just means that nothing is returned from it. And then here we're using an arrow. You can use basically arrow functions in Dart, similar to JavaScript arrow functions. And then we're just calling run app and we're initializing this my app, which we actually have defined right here as a stateless widget. Okay, we have our build command in here. Or I'm sorry, a build method. And from there, we're returning material app, which allows us to use material design widgets. Okay, we can do things like set theme data um, and then down here. We have a home property which is equal to a custom widget called my home page and then they proceed to create a stateful widget. All right, but I'm not going to go through all this. I'm just going to get rid of everything actually and we're going to start fresh. So first thing we're going to do since we want to use material design is import that from package colon flutter slash material dot dart. Okay, so this allows to use material design. Now, like I said, every Dart application has a main function, which is basically like an entry point. So we're going to say void because it doesn't return anything main. And then we can use an arrow an arrow here because it's just a one a one line function and we're just calling run app. Okay, and then in here we could actually pass in directly the material app like that. However, I think it's neater to create um, basically like a core or root widget, which we'll call my app like that. And then we'll define that by saying class my app. And that's going to extends not sex extends <laughs> extends the stateless uh, see, stateless widget class. Okay, and then in here we need to run our build method or I should say override our build method because this stateless widget class has a build method. And when we do this, typically you'll see this at override like that, which isn't required, but it's just more readable and it shows you that you're actually overriding a method. And then we'll say widget build. 
Okay, and then every build method has a build context passed into it. So build context and then context. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and return our material app. All right. Now, just to show you real quick, if we go to the docs, let's search for flutter material app. Okay, so the material app class. Uh, which is an application that uses material design. It's a convenience widget that wraps a number of widgets that are commonly required for material design applications. So you can see right here material app and then there's a whole there's a lot of different properties you can use. But home is basically what's going to show in the UI. And typically what you'll do is use the scaffold widget. Okay, so if we want to look at that. say flutter scaffold so scaffold is basically a high level um, widget where you can have multiple lower level widgets inside and there's different properties like for the app bar you use the app bar widget in the body you can use whatever widgets you want in this case you're using the center widget you can have the you know buttons this is a floating action button so before we get into scaffold i just want to get something up on the page. So I'm actually going to say for home, we'll just use a text widget. And if I hover over this, if you hover over any widgets, it'll tell you exactly what it is. So this just creates a text widget. Um, it can also take in a style property and you can use a, a, what's called a text style widget. So I'll show you that as well. So in here, we'll just say hello world and save it. And this should actually run. So let's minimize this. And that's what we get, which is very ugly, uh, kind of the default look. If we want to, we can add in a style property here and we can use a text style widget. And what this takes in is a bunch of properties. For instance, if we want to do uh, font size, we could say, I don't know, 30. Let's do 30.5. And for color. We could say colors dot and then we can use any material design colors. So for instance, we'll say green and if I hover over this, I believe I don't. Yeah. So if I hover over this, we'll see some options here for different shades of green. So let's say we want this right here. We could use green brackets 400 for our color. So let's go ahead and save that. And there we go. Okay, so what we have here is just uh, our main widget which is using material app which is just showing a text widget with the text hello world and then we're using a text style widget to add some style to that which still looks incredibly ugly okay now i don't want to use a text widget i just wanted to give you a quick example so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this so we just have uh, our home property and from here we're going to use scaffold All right, and in scaffold we can set an app bar property and we're going to use an app bar widget. Okay, now the app bar widget takes in a title. And for that title, we can't just put a string like we can't say um let's say word pair generator. So obviously, I mean this is giving us a, an error here. So string can't be assigned to the parameter type. It has to be a widget. So we're going to use a text widget. So we'll wrap this in text like that and that should be good. So if we go ahead and save that, there we go. So we have our app bar. So in addition to app bar, actually I want to show you how we can set the theme. So another property that we can have in here. I really don't like how VS Code formats this, but I guess we'll deal with it. So we can set theme and we have a theme data widget we can use. And so let's put in here, we'll use primary color. So if we want to set the primary color, we can use colors dot and let's use we'll use purple and let's see, we'll do like um I guess just purple, but you can change the shade if you want any of these. Actually, I kind of like purple 900. Let's do that. So brackets 900 and we'll save. Uh 
what did I do wrong here? Home scaffold. Oh, I'm sorry. Theme does not go in scaffold. It goes in material app directly. So we want to put that here. There we go. Okay, so and now you can see that the app bar has changed to that deep purple. So for the body here, obviously we want to put stuff here. So inside the scaffold, in addition to app bar, we're going to have our home property. And for now, I'm going to use a center widget. Okay, and if we hover over this, it'll tell us that it creates a widget that centers its child. So basically, you have a child widget in here. So we can say, give it a property of child. And let's just set that to text. And we'll just say, hello world. Uh, let's see, why am I getting this? So app bar, oh, I put home, I'm sorry, this should be body. So scaffold takes in body, not home. Home is for the material app widget. So there we go, we have hello world. So, I mean, this this kind of gives you an idea of how you build up your UI. It's just a, it's basically it's a widget tree is what it is. What I want to do now is look at packages because we're going to use a package called English words and that's going to give us the, the core functionality of generating these word pairs. So if I go to my browser and we go to its pub dot dev, this is dart packages and just like you have, you know, NPM. Um, for Node.js, you know, you have uh, all your, your packages in just about every language. So Dart has its own packages and we're going to use English words, which is right here. And this is a package containing whatever 5000 used English words and some utility functions. And it just kind of gives you some information now to install packages. We want to add it to our dependencies in our pub spec file, our pub spec .yaml file. So we want to take the dependency. I'll just grab this and go uh, back to our turn, our uh, editor here and go into our pub spec .yaml file. And you'll see that we have our dependencies here. So we have the Flutter SDK. We have this. Cupertino icons, which is included by default. We'll actually be using those in a little bit. And then we want to put our English words. Okay, we actually want it um, at this level. Okay, so we'll save that. And then to install this, actually it installs it automatically with uh, with how we have everything set up. So we should be able to use it. But if you don't have, you know, if you're not running the the flutter extension and the debugger and so on then you have to run pub get or flutter pub get which is like an npm install all right so let's minimize this and then we can close this file and from here we're going to import our english words package so we can say import package colon and then the name of the package which is english words and then it's going to be english words dot dart. Okay, so that will bring the package in and we just have this blue line because it's unused. We haven't used it yet. So down here in our build, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. Now, this variable is going to be a constant, meaning that it can't be changed or I, I shouldn't say it can't be changed. It can't be reassigned. So I'm going to use the final keyword here. We're going to say final and then we'll call this word pair. Okay, now Final is similar to const in JavaScript. Um, so basically you can assign like a, a list, which is similar to an array and, in that, and you can change the values. You just can't directly reassign this variable and it can be something dynamic. Like let's say we wanted to use date time dot now or something like that, which this isn't going to be a, a static value that we always know. So it's fine to do this. Now there is a const keyword as well, but you don't want to use it with something like this. In fact, we're going to get an error and you can see right here. Const variables must be initialized with a constant value. So basically, when you know the, the value, when you if you're always going to know this value, you can use const, but usually you're going to use final. Okay, if you're going to use one at all. And then we're going to just that's not what we want here. What we want to do is use the word pair object which comes with the English words package. And then there's some actually there's only one method I think on this called random. 
And what that will do is it'll generate a random word pair. In fact, if I hover over it, it'll tell us creates a single word pair randomly. So for now, down here, let's just replace inside the text widget. We'll replace this static string of hello world with our variable of word pair. And then there's some methods attached to that to how we want it to be displayed. We could do as lowercase Pascal case. I'm going to use Pascal case, which is it'll start with an uppercase and then each word after that will start with an uppercase. Okay, so we'll save that. And now you can see I get bunch bed. So it's going to create just a random word pair. If I reload up here, I'll click the reload icon. We get aunt cure. Click it again. We get trunk rod. So it just generates basically a single word pair. Now for this application, we want a whole list of them in a list view. Uh, later on, we're also going to be able to favorite a word pair and have a separate page where we can view our favorites. So instead of for the home property right here in material app, instead of just adding our scaffold here, I'm going to call a custom widget that we're going to create called random words. So let's see material app ends here. So everything within this home property, I'm going to just get rid of and we're going to have this call random words which we haven't created yet. So let's go down here and let's create a class called random words. And this is going to take care of the state. So um, oh, this is going to override the create state. So we need to extend state full widget. And we're going to override. And then we're going to have a, another class called random words state and we're overriding create state and we're going to call random words state. Okay, and that's really all we have to do in, in this particular class. So now we're going to create the class random words state and this is where we handle all our UI stuff and this has to extends state and inside brackets we want to put our random words. Okay, so this is where our build will go. So let's say widget build takes a build context. And let's return here a scaffold widget. Okay, so within this scaffold, we're going to have our app bar because remember we, we took away the app bar and stuff up here. We're calling random words directly for the home property. So uh, let's see, we're going to have our app bar, which is obviously going to be an app bar widget, which takes in a title property. And for that title property, we're going to have a text widget. And let's just say uh, word pair generator semicolon there. All right. So if I save this, okay, so it's still working. We have our app bar. So for the body, just to test it out, we'll just say we'll put a text widget here and say hello. Okay, so we get hello. Obviously, this isn't what we want. What we want to have is what's called a list view. So I'm actually going to create a new widget that will hold our list view. So instead of the, just this text widget of hello inside the body, let's say underscore build list. And then we're going to go above our build here and let's say widget underscore build list. And then we want to have our list view. Now I'm going to just pull up the docs real quick. So flutter list view. And a list view is the most commonly used scrolling widget. It displays its children one after another in a scroll direction. So something like this. In this example, it's a list view and there's some padding. So for padding, we're using the edge insets widget and we have a children property which just contains containers. And inside the container, we have some properties like height, color and so on. And then we have a center widget with a child widget of a text widget with entry A, entry B, entry C. In fact, we could grab this 
and we could go ahead and return paste that in just add a semicolon down here and then if we take a look at our app there we go so we just have basically a static uh, list view now we don't want this to be static we want this to be a dynamic list of random word pairs so in order to do that we're going to use the builder method okay in fact if we look at let's see where is it so just search for builder so right here we can use this dot builder and then we can have a property called item builder which is basically like an iterator okay it takes in a context and an index and by the way you can use static types like this like int index so this has to be an int i haven't been doing that i probably should have mentioned that in the beginning um but yeah you can you can add types to your variables and functions and stuff like that i just haven't been doing it so anyway this is what we're going to do is is turn this into a builder or use the builder method so that we can use dynamic data um but before we do that let's create a variable up here or property called random word pairs and we can get these generated using the english words package that we're using remember we used word pair um, up above up here which we don't even need this anymore i can get rid of this but we called this word pair random well we can actually get a list of word pairs by doing it this way okay we want to add just some brackets here which defines this is a list Okay, so representation of a combination of, of two words and then a list or, or an array, I guess. It, arrays are called lists in Dart. So that will generate the list. Now we want to iterate through that list and output um, list items. Okay, list items of list tiles. Each one of these is actually called a, a list tile. So padding, let's see, I'm going to actually change that to 16. And then instead of children, we're going to use that item builder property, which is a function. So item builder, and then we can get rid of this widget and then everything within the brackets and the brackets themselves. And let's say context and item. Okay, so basically we're going to iterate through the items now. basically what we want to have is the word pair and then a divider and then word pair divider and so on so to do that we're just going to do a quick if statement and see if the divider is odd there's a property called is odd and if that's true then we're going to return a material design divider okay and if we hover over that you'll see creates a material design divider. You do have some stuff you can add to it like height and thickness and so on, but we're just going to keep the default. Okay. And then next thing we want to do is create our index. So we're going to say final index and we're going to set this to our item. And basically we want this to calculate the number of word pairs that are in the list view minus the divider widgets. And we do that like this. Okay. So We don't want the dividers included here. And then I want to be able to generate new word pairs as we scroll down. So we'll just generate 10 new word pairs. So let's say if the index is greater than or equal to the random word pairs length, just like in JavaScript, we have a length property for lists or for arrays. Then we're going to take random word pairs and we're going to call a method called add all. And inside add all, we're going to call a function called generate word pairs, which is available because of that English words uh, package that we're using. And then we can add on to that a method called take. So the and then the amount that we want to take or, or create, I guess, which would be 10. Okay. Um, let's see what's the problem here item builder isn't defined um, oh I forgot to add dot builder so it shouldn't be just return list view it should be list view dot builder which contains the item builder 
Um, this function has a return type of divider. Yes. Yeah, so this item builder needs to actually return something. Uh, and what we want to return is actually a list tile for each one. Okay, each of those items is a list tile and I'm going to put that in a separate widget called build row. So inside the item builder at the very end, we're going to go ahead and return underscore build row. And then we want to just pass in what we want each row to have, which of course is going to be the random word pair. So random word pairs and then the current index will get passed in. Okay, and then we'll go right under that widget. and create build row which takes in a pair okay and we can even add here word pair because that's what this is uh, let's see yeah so widget build row and then in here we're going to return a list tile which is basically a row if we hover over this let's see what it says um it doesn't give us much information create it's basically just one of the rows in the list view uh and then that takes in a widget or it takes in a property of title which we could add a text widget to and i could just say hello and if i save that we just get uh, a list view with a bunch of list tiles that say hello and you can see the divider between each one because we basically said if the item is odd then we want it to be a divider. Uh but obviously we don't want to say hello, we want to pass in whatever the pair is, it's being passed in right here. Okay, the current index. So we'll just go ahead and replace this with pair dot and then we want it to display as Pascal case. and i just want to add some style i want to make it a little bigger so we'll say style and let's set that to a text style widget and we'll set the font size to 18 okay we'll save that and there we go so now we have a list view and in each list tile widget we have a text widget that has the word pair, okay, a random word pair, and then for style we have a text style widget. So you can see that a Flutter app is just a bunch of widgets, okay? The UI is just a whole, a whole bunch of widgets, and if I scroll, it'll keep going and it'll keep generating new widgets and it's very performant. Okay? Cuz right here we're just generating more. Um so that's that's it. I mean Yeah, so that's how we can create a a, a dynamic list view. Now I want to add some functionality here. I want to have an icon on each one on this side where we can favorite or or like um certain word pairs and then we'll have a separate page because I do want to show you how we can have a, a second page where it shows all of our favorites. All right, so let's get into that. Now one thing I would like to do before we do that actually is move our random words widget into a separate file and and include that rather than having everything in this one single file. So inside lib, let's create a new file called random_words.dart. Okay? And then we're going to need this we're going to need both of these imports. So I'm going to copy those and put those in there. And then we're not going to need this English words here anymore. what we will do is import the random words um the random words file so from here let's say dot slash random words dart and then i'm going to take both of these classes i'm going to take those and move those to our random words dot dart and save that and then go back here and save that. Let's see what's this going. Oh, I forgot my semicolon. All right. So now we're going to go back to our random words and we need a new variable or a new property up at the top here. So let's go under random word pairs and we need a a place to store our saved word pairs. Okay? So basically we're going to have icons and we check on the heart 
it's going to get stored in save word pairs, which is going to be a set. So let's say saved word pairs, which is going to equal a set of word pairs. Okay, we need parentheses here. So basically a, a set is a collection of objects where each object can only appear once. So you can't have multiple of the same objects. And that's fine because we don't want multiple saved word pairs. All right, so now that we've done that, we have this initialized. Let's go down to our build row because that's where we're going to be working for the most part in terms of the functionality in order to click the icon and show the icon and so on. So in here, let's go above our list tile and create a variable called already saved. And we're going to set that to our saved word pairs and see if it contains that the current pair, which is passed in here. Okay, so each one, the build row represents each one of these. So we're going to look at whatever this is. and see if it's contained in saved word pairs, which we just defined above. All right. And then down here, we want to have our icon. So let's see, we're going to go. I don't like how they how VS Code formatted this. So in the list tile after the title, which ends. Uh, the title no after the text, sorry, which ends here. Yeah, let's put that over there and put a comma here and then we want to have a property called trailing, okay? Which means we we can put something over here. We want an icon. So we want an icon widget and in here I could just say icons dot and then there's a for the heart icon it's called favorite So if I save that, we just get a bunch of heart icons. Now, the icon needs to be conditional, right? It needs to be red if it's saved and then basically blank if it's not. So instead of just putting a hard coded icon, I'm going to take that already saved value, which will be either true or false and use a ternary and say if so, then we want icons dot favorite. else then we want icons dot and we're going to use favorite border which is basically like a um, like an empty heart it's not filled in gray but we do want to add a color if it's saved right we, if it's already saved we want it to be red so we're going to specify color which is also conditional depending on already saved so if it is saved then we're going to use colors dot red else then it's going to be null no color So let's save that and now we get a bunch of blank hearts. So we need the functionality where we click on a heart and we have an event fire off and we basically either add or remove this item to already saved. So we're going to go underneath trailing. So let's see, we want to be. I really don't like how this is formatted. So we have trailing null. So underneath this, we're going to put on tap, okay, which is just that. It's when when this icon is tapped, we're going to run a function. And this is where we're going to actually change the state. We're going to use set state and set state takes in a function. And we want to check to see if this item is already saved. Okay, so if it's already saved, then we're going to take our saved word pairs, which is where it's stored, and we're going to remove, okay, if we click it, because we're going to be able to toggle our saved items. Else, then we're going to take the saved word pairs and we're going to add the pair. Okay? And the pair being whatever the current iteration is, whatever is passed in right here. All right, so let's save that. And if we go over here, if I click, even if I just click anywhere in here, it doesn't have to be on the actual icon, you'll see that it turns red. So it's getting added to this already, I'm sorry, it's getting added to this saved word pairs. Okay, if I click it again, it should toggle it and unsave it. So we're actually using state here. Now, 
the last thing I want to do is I want to have a separate page that shows us the ones that are saved because if we go like way down here and click one, you know, we don't want to have to just search for them. So we want a separate page that lists our favorites. All right, so let's do that. We're going to create a little button up here to be able to do that. So down where we have the app bar in the, the build method here, in addition to title, let's put a comma here because we're going to add on to this. Uh, actually, let's put just so, you, so this is more readable. Put this here and then right under the title. Let's have actions. And actions, we're going to define widget and then open up some bra uh, square brackets. Okay, and in these square brackets, uh, let's put a comma here. We want to put an icon button, okay, which is just a, another widget. And inside here, it takes a property of icon. And we're going to set that to an icon widget. which takes in whatever icon we want to use. I'm going to use the list icon. So icons dot list. And then after that, we want to put on pressed. So what happens when we actually press this? We're going to call a function called push saved. Okay, and then I'll just create that function right up here. So void because it doesn't it's not going to return anything and then push saved. All right, and I'll just save that. And now you can see that we have the, the actual icon up here. And when we click that or when we tap that or press it, whatever you want to call it, it's going to call this function. So in here, we basically want to navigate to a, a different route on the stack. So your home page, this page here is, is the bottom route in the stack. And you can use a navigator class to basically um, add another at another route on top of it, what's called a mirror uh, material page route. So we're going to say navigator dot of our context and then push. Okay, so we're going to push onto the stack. Uh, and then here what we want to push is a material page route and material page route has a function called builder. Okay, so we want to set that. to a function and that takes in a build context. And in here is basically what you want to show on this new route. And I just want to show you real quick. This is the navigator class documentation. So it's a widget that manages a set of child widgets with a stack discipline. Uh, mobile ads typically Apps typically reveal their contents full screen. They're called screens or pages and flutter. These elements are called routes and they're managed by a navigator widget. The navigator manages a stack of route objects and provides methods for managing the stack like push and pop and pop. Uh, let's see. So down here it says is it? it's right here to push a new route onto the stack. You can create an instance of material page route with a builder function. That's what I just did. that creates whatever you want to appear on the screen. And then here they just have a simple example where they have a center widget with a text widget and so on. Um, but what we're going to do is create a list of our saved word pairs. All right. So here we're going to create a variable. Let's say final tiles. Um, so we're creating a list tile. Actually, we're creating an iterable. So let's say iterable. of list tiles and we're going to set this to our saved word pairs and we're going to use the map method here. Okay, so we can map through this um, and then in here we want another set of parentheses because we need a function function gets passed into map and for each one it's going to be a pair and it's a word pair. Okay, and then from here we want to return a list tile and a list tile takes in a title which we're going to say text okay text widget and it's going to take in whatever whatever pair is and then we're going to display it as pascal case we'll add some styles so we want to use a text style widget here 
and let's do font size and set that to 16 because we want this to look as as much like the home page as possible. We need semicolons here. Okay, so this builder has to return something. So let's see, builder ends right here. So we want to go down here and we want to create our list um, with dividers. Okay, remember on right here on the home page, we have these dividers. So we can do this. Let's say final divided. Actually, let's give this a type of list. which is a widget and set this divided to our list tile, which has a method called divide tiles. Okay, so we're going to call this divide tiles. And if we hover over this, it says it adds a one pixel border in between each tile uh, and it will use the theme color and so on, unless unless you provide a different color. But that's what we want to call. And this takes in a context, which We're passing in the context from up here and then it also takes in tiles, which we have right here. Okay, so we have our list tile here. So let's see we have that. Let's just put a semicolon here. And then finally, we have to actually call to list. And if we hover over that, you'll see that it creates a list containing the elements of this iterable. Okay, the elements are in iteration order. The list is fixed length if growable is false. All right, and then finally, we want to return a scaffold widget. So we're going to go under the to list here and we're going to return from our builder function a scaffold. And in here we're going to pass in an app bar because remember this is a new route or a new page and we're going to have an app bar. Uh, widget and this takes in a title and we're going to have a text widget as the title and it's going to say saved word pairs and let's see after the app bar we have our body and the body is going to be a list view component uh, widget sorry <laughs> and then this can take in a children property which is going to be our divided variable. Okay, our divided list. And I think that's it. Let's save. It gets for auto formatted. And if we click that, there we go. So you can see all of our saved word pairs. If I uncheck some of these, we'll uncheck dark mine and warm ease and go back. Now we have just these two. All right, so this gives you a, a good example of how we can keep state in our application. Go back. There we go. All right. So it's it's not the you know, the most useful app in the world, but I wanted to do something that was more than just some, you know, static uh, static list or whatever, just showing you like UI components and widgets and actually having some logic. So hopefully you at least learn the fundamentals and learned how to create stateless and stateful widgets and learned about, you know, scaffold and, and app bars and all that stuff and how to add some logic, list views, list tiles and and so on. So as far as publishing to a device like creating an app for the App Store, uh, you can look at let's see Flutter iOS build. So this page here will tell you how to do that. You need to register your app on the App Store Connect and you need to take some steps and preparations for that. And you can also search for Flutter Android build and some steps to to go through that as well. Okay, but I'm not going to do this in this course. Obviously, this is just a, a beginner's crash course. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.